Hello and welcome to the fifth race of the 2013 Utica Home Track Series here at Watkins Glen, the home track of the Utica Home Track Series, or at least as close as we get. The starting grid rolls past. We have 42 cars here today, ready to duke it out at Watkins Glen, one of the main tracks that have been on the circuit since our inaugural season in 2011. Cars will pass, and as always, all the cars with an R by their name are the rookie contenders, so watch out for them during the day as they're going to be battling for their own set of points. Quite a few cars failed to qualify for today's race, and we are going to look at them now. And let's take a look at these cars that failed to qualify. We have Jake Smith, who just been made in. Joseph Bryan missing his first race of the season. Dylan Young, who got rookie of the race last week, among others, including some road race races like Michael Aurelio, which was the big surprise. And speaking of an Aurelio, on the pole was Chris Aurelio, car number 27, the brother of Michael Aurelio. Now, Chris Aurelio is the Utica Rallycross Series champion, and that series really helped him make do better on the road courses, as shown by this qualifying effort. 27 cars trying to run as well as Michael Aurelio, but at the current moment, there's William Duncan making a pass for the lead, and it looks like it is going to stick, but Chris Aurelio up near the front of the pack. A close call here on lap one as we head into the bus stop. Brandon Bain, Brian Valentine, and others are going to stack up. Kevin Ulrich, Brian Bro, and Tyler Benoit almost get punted onto the infield of the racetrack, but everyone's going to keep going without too much of a hitch other than cars being pretty slow going through that. The only driver that's going to suffer, Brian Bro, he's going to cut a tire on a piece of debris that was in the bus stop. So unfortunately, Brian Bro is going to have to go down pit road and he's going to lose a lot of time as this pit road is long and pretty slow. William Duncan was the race leader going on to lap two. Now, William Duncan made his debut in this series halfway through 2012 at Daytona. He has not been to this track before in this series, but he has some racing experience under his belt, and he's doing a great job leading the race right now. Now, road race ace Connor Atwood, who is a teammate of the 83 car, did not qualify for today's race and actually has not made a single start this season. He's been having a lot of issues. But William Duncan trying to make up the difference today, and he's doing very well. And also, he also only raced speedways last season, so he's a rookie of the year contender, but running well on the road course. Incident lap three. David Yonke, car number row seven, doing great in points, but had a troublesome couple of weeks. He's almost going to run into the back of another car, and he's going to spin off track into the dust. And that car's going to... Whoa, there's Zachary Robinson as well, and he's going to make contact. Let's see what happened with Zachary Robinson. Oh, it looks like a tire went on the five car. It's going to go wide, and it's just going to go spinning into the turn one and hit into David Yonke. More troubles with Seth Cole, car number 52. As this car almost goes off the racing surface, but he's going to keep it going. But he's going to lose quite a few spots as he tries to get that 52 car back on track. The season has started out well in Bristol for Seth Cole, but things have been kind of going up and down for him lately. Joseph Bryant failed to qualify for the race as teammates, so this has been a bad weekend for the Nitro Motor Motorsports cars. Julian Canabled Jr., car number 45 for JFI, is currently running in third place. Now, the Mexican has had a rough season so far, missing the first couple of events, but once Zanvor came around, he was able to start picking it up, and now he is locked into the races. He just needs to make sure he keeps this performance up. He's having a great run today, and he's hoping to make the JFI cars proud. Matt Evans, car number four, one of our past winners. We're going to cover our past winners now. This is the defending winner, and he won this race last year as the first race of his three-race winning streak. Now, Matt Evans not having nearly as good of a season as he did last year, but he's trying his best, and he's currently running in 10th place. Right behind him is new teammate Russell R. Curie, car number 10. And both of them are having a decent run today, but Matt Evans... Really hoping that he can get into victory lane with his new team. He hopes that this was not a bad career move on his part. 
John Sadino won the inaugural race here at Watkins Glen in a dominating fashion. And whoa, we, I think we, I, we're hearing something in the background there. We seem to have a wreck on track, but we're going to get to that in a second if we continue to cover John Sadino. John Sadino is running about 29th at the moment, but he started near dead last, so he's really picked up. I See what happened here. Seth going down. Kevin Allrich is going to drive right into the back of the 52 car, and both of them are going to collide. And Ulrich is jammed right into the fender of Seth Cole. So let's see uh, what ha look at it from uh, Justin Benoit's camera angle. And good job, almost just avoided Brian Valentine. But both cars of Seth Cole and Kevin Ulrich will unfortunately go out of the race. It's a shame. Andrew Robinson, we saw his brother Zachary Robinson earlier spinning into the gravel trap. But Andrew Robinson has been having a much better day. He is sitting in the top ten. Now this car has had a troublesome season at May the Megville Bowl Run. He had a great effort and was running seven, but some wrecks near the beginning really put him down a notch, and he is currently not locked in. He's hoping to have a really great run today and try and build up those points so that when Darlington comes around, he has a chance to make the show. Incident lap 15. Brandon Bain, he's always had a curse on these road courses, and it's going to be the same again. If he almost hits in the Brian Valentine, he's going to slide off track, and Zachary Robinson almost goes off as well. Brandon Bain, the road course curse continues. Incident lap 16. Trek Togger is battling with Matt Evans. Matt Evans pulls out of line, but cuts in front of Trek Togger, and both cars go wrecking, and Trek Togger is off into the gravel trap. And Trek Togger is not happy. We take a look at another angle. Now Matt Evans tried to plot a line in the past Colin Bartel in the slow car of Andreas Allen. He tries to pull back in but cuts off Trek Togger and they both make contact. Great save by Matt Evans to keep himself from not going into the gravel trap as he works his way back on track. But as you can see, all those cars passing him by, he's going to lose a lot of spots off of it. One more angle. Let's take a look at on board with Trek Togger and see what he saw. Yeah, it looks like Matt Evans just cut in front of him and Trek Togger had a lot to say on the radio. This has been a bad season for Trek Togger. And this is just further showing that he has horrible luck. And he's not happy with Matt Evans either. Vladimir Petrov, the road race ace. Car number 09 is going to have some trouble early on. He is going to have to pit from 20th place for a flat tire. So Vladimir Petrov, hoping to have a great day today. He's a skilled driver, but the car just isn't working today with that cut tire. Now we're going to go on board with Dylan Ogle in number 95 for the Ford Fast Lap. Dylan Ogle is currently running in 30th in the Pepsi Next Ford, but we will still get the same visual as you would from the lead car. He is sitting right now behind Bob Cortez as we head through that turn one that has been causing a lot of trouble today. A lot of cars have been spinning out there because it's a very slow section on the track and you can kind of, and they're, they're trying to avoid hitting each other. Now we go into the S's as these are long sweeping turns. We haven't had too much trouble over here today. They've been kind of running single file in this segment. But now we're heading to the part of the track where Seth Cole and Kevin Ulrich had their little pile up. Now this is another track you have to watch out because this is one of three sections where cars really tend to pile up when they head into a turn. They start to check up as we head into the bus stop, which was put here to prevent things like the J.D. McDuffie fatal crash that happened here in 1991. Get through this long sweeping turn. As he's currently closing in on Bob Cortez, this is a very beautiful racetrack. I, like looking around, it's a very nice area, the Finger Lakes region. I've been there, obviously, because we're here at the race. As we head down, long shoot into the fountain, and you can see the skid marks that are the aftermath of the Trek Togger and Matt Evans crash. By the way, both of those cars are still going on track. As Dylan Ogo heading through the final turn in this turn here, you remember from last year, Neil Evans had a horrible wreck into that safer barrier. But they head down the front straightaway and they end it for the fourth fast lap. And right behind Dylan Ogo, Adam Dunlap's going to have a close save as, whoa, Adam Dunlap almost spins the car around. But the video game's awesome Toyota keeps it going on track. No Toyotas are currently scheduled to run at Darlington next week, however, because none of them are entered. And Drave Allen, number 08, has been running in 10th place, but he has been incredibly slow. I think this car may have dropped a cylinder, but he's been really holding up these drivers here and making sure that he can stay as far up on the racetrack as possible. 
and Dre Fallon had a lot of struggles today, but doing a great job at blocking, much to the chagrin of Nicholas Guerra, Colin Bartel, Jamie Murphy, Megan Curley, and others, as they're having a difficult time getting around him. Now we're going to have some early pit stops, and they're going to be kicked off by David Yonke and Zachary Robinson. They pit earlier, but they're pitting again to try and get back on sequence. They're already two laps off the pace. One lap later on lap 27, Andreas Allen would come down pit road along with two other drivers, Bob Pitino and the 04 car, who was having a decent day so far. And is going to be joined by the 7 car of Austin Ogo. All of them are hoping to capitalize on pit strategy here to gain some spots. Then the lap after that, everyone else would go down pit road. All the leaders, including William Duncan and Chris Aurelio. While most of the lead cars went down pit road, a couple drivers stayed out. Two would be, two in fact, Russell R. Curie, who would lead the lap, and Maria Camiso in that green number 26 Mountain Dew Ford. Now, Russell R. Curie, this is, I believe this is his first lap led today, and this season has not been going as well as the previous season in terms of wins, but he is doing well in the point standings and having a great run today, sitting in the top. 10. Incident lap 30. Michelle Sadie on car number 69, the Big Bang Theory car. She was running top 5 most of the day. She was thinking she was going to have a good run, but Bazinga! Car number 69 is going to go off track, and that is a shame, as this car was having a great run today on the road course. William Duncan would cycle back out into the race lead as Russell Arcuri and Marie Camiso head down pit road. William Duncan having a great race so far, saying he's hoping to keep it up as he had a huge lead over Julian Kennebles Jr. Vladimir Petrov and Trek Togger were so far the drivers that gained the most on pit road. They were sitting 9th and 10th at the moment, but Petrov and Togger would not be on track long. They would both pit in two laps to make sure they get to the end. They, for sure, did not have enough fuel to make it to the end. As they go around the track, we cover someone who's in the top 10 right now. That is Megan Curley, and oh god, the Rainbow Zen car is back and even more gaudy as the 20 car is just looking to destroy everyone's eyes on the racetrack. Look at that car. So many different colors, but Megan Curley, we can't say too much because she is running very well today, running in seventh place with that Rainbow Zen Dodge and is running the only good running car of the gassing engineering vehicles. Brian Bro, we saw him have the trouble on lap one, but car number 68 has regained itself to 33rd place and he's on the lead lap, so great job hustling for Brian Bro in number 68. This car will not be at the track next week at Darlington due to lack of funding. But they will be back for select races later in the year. Instant lap 40. Billy Bishop, car number 48, is going to check up, trying to not hit the points leader, Jamie Murphy, and that car is going to go sliding off the racing surface. Billy Bishop was having an okay day in 17th, but is going to lose a lot of spots because of this, as he's going to have to get towed out of that gravel trap. Julian Cannables Jr. was catching up to William Duncan, had a superior car. This car is running real fast, but the issue is passing. A lot of drivers have been having a tro an issue with passing today, and it's gonna have to, it, we're going to have to see if Ch Cannables Jr. can get by the 83 machine. Julian Cannables Jr. almost won the race last week in North Carolina, but things did not go as planned as he had to pit. Michelle Sadion, car number 69, case today hasn't been worse than bad enough. Things get worse as the 69 car is going to have a problem and that car is slow on the track and it's running way off course I'm not sure what's going on here I think something may have broke maybe an axle or something we're, no, we're, there's no word on the situation as Russell Curry and Maria Camiso run past and that is a shame for Michelle Fadino she usually does not have a good run in the races but today was looking to be very promising but that car is going to have to drop very far back in the pack on the final lap as we head through the bus stop. William Duncan was in the lead, but Julian Kennebles Jr. was in close pursuit. Kennebles only has a couple more turns to try and make a pass on the A3 car. He just needs to get in close enough, maybe even give him a little nudge to try and get him out of the way without wrecking both of their cars. Right behind them, it, sorry, right behind them is Chris Aurelio hoping that they both wreck each other. But it doesn't look like they're going to be aiming for that. As they head through the chute into the final turn, well not at the moment, now they're going to head to the final turn, but Kennebles just can't get close enough, can he make it in the final turn? Here we go, uh, no it doesn't look it, as we head down the line, unless Kennebles gets a really good run out of the turn, it looks like our winner for today, for his first career Unicom Track Series win, it is William Duncan, car number 83 in the Sony Dodge, 
This has been a great race for William Duncan, who has been having a pretty poor season so far. He, a couple races ago, he was in the qualifier event. Now, it looks like he's going to have a big boost in points. Congratulations to the Duncan Motorsports team, who really turned this weekend around from one of their cars not making the show. Now, let's take a look at the race results. William Duncan is your race winner. He's also Rookie of the Race, and he's going to get five extra Rookie of the Year points in the Rookie of the Year standings. He's followed by Kennebleth Jr., Aurelio, Dom Caps, Russell Curie, Maria Camiso, Andrew Robinson, Brandon Brock McMahon, Ben Curley, and Drace Allen in 10th place as we cycle through the top 20. Points leader Jamie Murphy finished 16th today. John Cedino in his first race back in his 72 car finished 21st, which isn't bad considering his starting spot. Then there's Rob, Tyler Benoit, Robert DeFrank, Dylan Ogo, Trek Togger, Matt Evans, and Bob Cortez running out the top 30. Then there's Brian Bros going to work his way all the way up to 31st from that trouble early on. Brandon Bain was the last car on the lead lap. Yankee Robinson and Bishop were two laps down. Michelle Sidney went three laps down. Ulrich and Cole were both out of this race, both having a terrible day. Now let's take a look at the full point standings. This is the top 35. All the cars are locked in the Darlington. Jamie Murphy is your points there by an even bigger margin over Brian Valentine. There's this Russell Curie, Colin Bartell, Megan Curley, Justin Kapp, Tyler Benoit, Broderick Mann, Dom Kapp, and Andreas Allen, your top 10. Bartell is still the highest placing rookie. William Junk is going to move all the way from the late, late 20s to 11th to cycle through the rest of the top 20s. You see Seth Cole is going to drop all the way back to 19th, tied with Eris Shock. Chris O'Reilly moves up to 21st in the standings. There's Brian Broughton, 24th, so we won't be here next week. Josh LeMayo still locked in, despite the fact he does not have a ride. Neil Evans, Kevin Ulrich, Billy Bishop, Adam Dunlap, Zachary Robinson, and Bob Cortez round out your top 35. Now let's look at the drivers that are going to have to qualify their way in next week if they are attempting the event. There's Alex Tank, who's just outside. Joshua Michaels, Vladimir Petrov, Ray Takita, John Cittadino, Joseph Bryan, Andrew Robinson, Dylan Young, Estavis Cortez, Michael Aurelio, who will not be here next week as it's not American Road Course, Dylan Ogo, Alex DeMarco, Jake Smith, Alex Allen, Justin Benoit, Jerry Guerra, Robert DeFrank, Brendan Patterson, Brian Benoit, Matt Duell, Willie Decker, Joe Martin, who won't be here next week because Nicky Allen's coming back, Dylan White, and Chris Kyle, who only has one point for the Youth Home Track Series standings. Now let's take a look at the top 10 in the Rookie of the Year standings. And still on top, it is the number 99 of Colin Bartell, who's been having a great Rookie of the Year run so far. Justin Capps sits in second, and William Duncan's going to get a huge boost with that win and the extra five bonus points. Then there's Dom Capps, Eris Schock, Austin Ogo, Julian Kennebleth Jr., Nicholas Guerra, Kevin Ulrich, and Bob Cortez running out that top 10 in the Rookie of the Year standings. The rest of the rookies are obviously not in the top 10. For our next race, we are heading to the Darlington Circuit. It should be a great race, as it usually is. If you have not commented on our race yet, I would start commenting because this was the deadline race. Hope to see you next time. See you later.